Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Leah, welcome. This is going to be a part two to a two part video all about my experiences and opinions and things about competing in the NPC and the IFBB. If you haven't watched part one, definitely watch that video first because that kind of explains my journey competing and um, basically why I stopped competing. And then in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you guys the five things that I wish I knew before I started competing. I just wanna say before we get into the video. I do not hate the industry in any way, shape, or form. I think there are definitely things that can be changed. There are definitely a lot of things that can improve. And again, maybe they have improved since I was competing because it's been a few years. But um, yeah, I respect everyone who competes. I think it's extremely hard. It takes a lot of work and dedication to be a part of that sport and that world. I respect it. I no longer do it, but I enjoyed my time in it. I had a blast on stage. The stage was 100% my favorite part of everything. But yeah, if you wanna know the five things that I wish I knew before I started competing, then just keep watching. So the first thing I wish I knew was how much it costs to do this. Like, yes, it can turn into a career for some people if you're on that high level of Instagram followers and companies wanting to work with you and things like that. But until then, girl, you are dishing out coin stuff, okay? And you're not getting those coins back. You have to pay for your bikini, which is a few hundred dollars, and you buy multiple of them because you gotta figure out what color looks good on you and what your signature look is gonna be. You might like purple, but purple might not look good on you on stage, okay? So you're gonna try out different suits. You gotta pay for all of those. Spray tans aren't free. Makeup and hair, I would do my own hair and I would most of the time get my makeup done, but most people get their hair and makeup done by someone else. You gotta pay those people. You gotta get your nails done you got to pay for the high heels which those you, you can buy once and wear them over and over again but for NPC shows you got to pay entry fees you don't have to pay entry fees on the pro level however you do have to pay for your pro card every year if you're going to not just compete locally which on the NPC level I guess you could just compete locally aside from national shows unless you live in the city where the national shows are you have to pay for flights you have to pay for hotels on the pro level like you are you have to travel the shows aren't you know there's not 15 shows pro shows in one little city. So you're gonna have to travel and you're gonna have to pay those costs unless you have sponsors that are paying for it for you. Um, all the food, all the travel, all the, just everything. It does add up and then you're not getting any of that money back. On the NPC level, you don't win shit. Maybe like a freaking six pack bag or something When if you win. On the pro level, only first, second, and third place, even if you're top five, only first, second, or third place win money. And it's not even the amount of money that you spent to get there. <laughs> so you dish out a lot of money for this. And the only real money is if you freaking go to Olympia and win that shit, which obviously if you are familiar with the sport, it's very hard to do. So yeah, I wish I knew how much money it cost because I did really love competing when I was competing, but I was working full time at a corporate job. It's expensive to compete, okay? The second thing I wish I knew before I jumped into the industry unknowingly was knowing how much time it takes up competing in the NPC or the IFBB or the WBFF or all these different industries, it's unlike any other sport. So I played volleyball for instance, right? I go to volleyball practice, it's an hour or two, then I'm done. I have a tournament on a weekend, I go through a tournament, after that I'm done. With competing, you're never done, okay? You go to the gym, but then when you leave the gym, you still gotta eat your meals at the right time, you gotta eat the right things, you gotta cook the food, you gotta get the right amount of water in, you gotta wake up early and make sure you're getting your first meal in, you gotta make sure you have time on top of a full-time job to get into the gym, like, it does not end. It's not like a, oh, I just go to the gym for the hour and then I'm done. It's 24 seven commitment with everything. So I didn't know once I got into it, how intense it is. I was training seven days a week. I mean, lifting different body parts each day, but lifting, I was at the gym seven days a week. I was eating five to six meals every single day, waking up at five every day, cause I had to go to work also. So I had to make sure that I could have my breakfast. After work, I would basically wake up at five, eat my first meal, get ready for work. I would bring all my meals to work, eat them all throughout the day in the office, drive home, which took an hour. And then as soon as I got home, I would eat a meal, go to the gym for an hour or two, come home, eat my last meal, shower, go to bed, do it all again every single day. So it takes a lot of time. 
is what I'm trying to say. The third thing I wish I knew was how much, this has positive and negatives, but just how much the food aspect of it all would change the way that I view food today. So prior to ever competing, I will say I was lucky I ate whatever I wanted and nothing really happened. I'm still that way. But because I competed and you had to eat a certain way with you know, veggies, carbs, proteins, just being cautious of that. I don't know. I just, I never before competing focused on like every single meal needs protein. Every meal needs this. I ate when I was hungry. And when you compete, you eat when you have to. So I ate when I had to and the meals had what it had to have in it for each meal. So now that I'm no longer competing and I no longer have to eat like that, my brain is wired that way, like permanently or something because now eating is no longer fun for me or it's not just like I eat when I'm hungry. My brain is always like, did I eat five meals today? Did each meal have protein? If I'm craving something and I'm like, man, I really want like pasta. Then I'm like, oh, but you can't just eat the pasta. You have to make sure I have this amount of protein in it. It's always like that now. And I wish I could undo that because now food is such a chore to me every day. It's not just, oh, I'm hungry or, oh, I'm craving this. Let me eat this. No, I have to always be planning what I'm eating and I can't for some reason undo that. I haven't been able to undo that or just enjoy food. Now it's always a conscious thought and process and it's just a lot. So I wish that maybe I had known that that was gonna happen before I started competing. The fourth thing I wish I knew was how political the sport is. And I understand that it's a business. So on one hand, I, I understand and on the other hand, I think it's bullshit. Just in the short time that I was a pro competing on that level, the NPC level is pretty chill from what I from what I saw. The pro level though is on some bullshit. Basically, it's all political. So I think it's annoying that they don't judge based on what you look like on stage. I think the judging should be transparent. I think all judges should judge the same and it should be based on the criteria. If you look up what the bikini criteria is, there is a criteria of what the judges should be looking for, but they don't judge like that, okay? Judges judge differently in different regions. At the time, I don't know if it's changed since then, but at the time, for instance, I could never do well competing on the West Coast because they like bigger girls. I'm very, very lean, so I wouldn't do well there. So I can't compete on the West Coast. Centrally, I could compete and do well because the judges, for the most part, in like Texas, Oklahoma, states like that, liked my look, okay? On the East Coast was hit or miss because, so the East Coast was dominated by a certain team. So, if you were at a show competing and meet, let's say two or three girls from this particular team were at that show, they were gonna place and you were not because they were part of that team, if that makes sense. Like I said, it's a business. So if, if you're a competitor and you're associated with or sponsored by a certain brand or a certain um, company or coach or team, that can affect the way that you place. I think that they should judge you based on what you look like. Once you step on stage, I don't think sponsors and coaches and brands and all of that should matter. I think they should strip all of that away and they should just look at you and judge you off of the criteria. Another thing is that usually, so on the pro level, so okay, on the NPC level, all these people can sign up for the show, right? On the pro level, the judges have a list of who's gonna be competing at that show before the show takes place. And on the pro level, obviously, it's gonna be less people than at an NPC show. At an NPC show, there might be like freaking 100 bikini girls competing. At a pro show, it's gonna be like sometimes 15 girls, sometimes 30. But anyways, the judges know who's competing at the show before they even get there. And a lot of times, the top five girls are chosen before we even get there. It's based on other things, obviously, because we haven't even stepped on stage yet. So some of these top girls, I'm not trying to shit on anyone, by the way. I'm just, I'm not like bitter and mad about it. I'm just telling you what it was and how it was then. It might be different now. I don't know, because I'm not in the industry anymore. But at the time, these things would happen. Also, some of these girls had very close relationships with the judges. They knew the judges' spouses and their families and all that crap. And I personally believe that all of that was taken into effect if they were judging them and they know them on that level. But that's not who I am. I'm not about to kiss ass to place and I'm not gonna be buddy-buddy BFFs with these men that are in their 50s just to do well at the shows. I think that's weird and I think that's 
gross, but things like that happened at that level. Do I have proof of any of this? No, I don't, but these are the things I saw, I witnessed, I heard, I have credible sources for. And again, like I said, this might not be taking place anymore, but it did at one time. So yeah, you can choose to believe me or not. It is what it is, but I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, and the last thing I wish I knew before I started competing was just about how the judging is crap. I kind of got into that in my last point. I wish I had known that at the pro level, it does not always matter how hard you worked during your prep, how strict you were with your diet, how great you look coming into the show. That might not matter if you're not associated with the right team, with the right brands, with the right sponsors and the right coach and coaches that have big names. I'm sure you guys have seen it all and you have known over the years which coaches and teams dominate the industry. And that's not just because they have great looking girls. Some of them do have really great looking girls that deserve those first place, second place, third place wins, but some of them don't. I had a friend and I'm not gonna say her name. She's very sweet, I love her. She doesn't have a, you know, malicious bone in her body, but I mean, we, me and her had a conversation about this because she competed at a show and did not place, she placed somewhere in the middle the very next show, like literally a week later, she competed at another show, very close to the other show, close in distance, close in time, with almost the same competitors. The same girls were competing at that show and then the next one. And one show, she didn't place well. And between that show and the other show, she joined a particular team. And that very next show, she got second place. So yeah, that just goes to show like what I mean about it's a business and things are judged not just by the criteria and how you show up on stage, but um, a lot of other factors as well, which I think that's crap. That is one of the main reasons I didn't wanna continue competing, not because I didn't think that I could do well in the industry because I think I could have done really well and gone really far if I kept going, but all of that just doesn't sit well with me. But yeah, that's my little IFBB story, why I no longer compete and the things that I wish I knew before I ever started competing. Just a final disclaimer, I'm not trying to shit on the industry or anyone that competes. I was just trying to state my experience, the things that I witnessed, the things that I went through, the things that I saw, the things that I knew. It just is what it is. But yeah, I hope that the industry has changed since then. If not, I hope it does one day so that it's more fair for people that are competing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was a long one, but I had a lot of information. So um, if you made it this far, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below your opinion on competing if you've competed before or if you're thinking about it or what you think about the industry. I'd love to hear it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Apologies